It's that time of year where we round up our top Disney World restaurants that we think you should prioritize during your upcoming visit. Plus, we're throwing in some bonus material throughout today's video too. You'll see what I mean. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. I love Disney World restaurant videos. Love them, love them, love them, love them. Especially when we're talking about the best Disney World restaurants property wide. And since I am so excited to make this 2025 top restaurants video, I'm actually gonna do something I've never done before. During the course of today's video, I'm gonna leak some of the top tips that come straight from our DFB guide to Walt Disney World dining, which you can find on the dfbstore.com website right now. I know, I'm breaking all the exclusive stuff today, friends. So whenever you see this guidebook icon flash onto the screen, you'll know that we're about to talk about something straight from the digital guide pages that we've poured our blood, sweat, and hungry tummies into. So let's get started. What's new? So Disney World might not have released a whole lot of new restaurants this year, but what they did open definitely needs to be on your radar. So let's start with the first new restaurant grand opening of 2024. Should I say reopening? After years of being closed, 1900 Park Fair finally reopened back in April over at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. Now this is a character buffet. It doesn't mean you're eating a bunch of characters on a buffet. It means you are going to a buffet restaurant where you're going to meet characters. Open for breakfast and dinner where you'll be able to meet Disney's famous wish makers, Aladdin, Mirabelle, Cinderella, and Tiana. What makes them wish makers? Couldn't tell ya. And make sure to get an extra scoop of the chilled strawberry soup for me because I love that stuff. Now, let's skip ahead a few months onto August, which is when the Blue Ribbon Corn Dogs kiosk finally opened over at Disney's Boardwalk Inn. Typically, this one is most known for its experimental corn dog creations, like that super controversial pickle corn dog with the peanut butter dipping sauce. But recently, Blue Ribbon dropped a new snack item, the giant mozzarella stick, which I have been waiting for it to come to this coast. Yes, it's been over on the West Coast for a while, but I am a huge fan of this one. It is a gorgeously ginormous mozzarella stick, lots of cheese for your cheese bowl. Now, the one thing I don't love about this new mozzarella stick is the price point. It's going to put you back $15.50. But it does come with a side of potato chips, which still don't think should make this mozzarella stick cost so much, but I don't know. Might be worth a novelty and cheese pool for ya. I love this mozzarella stick, so there we go. And then years and years and years of asking and asking finally got us the Cake Bake Shop and Bakery. The Cake Bake Shop is also over at Boardwalk Inn, is a brand new table service restaurant that opened at the end of October, and it serves sweet and savory items for brunch, lunch, and dinner in a setting that quite literally sparkles. For the release of this video, you can only book reservations to eat here through the Open Table app and not through the Disney World app yet. But be warned, reservations here are booking up fast, real fast. If there is a time you're wanting to make a reservation for the Cake Bake Shop that you're not seeing is currently available, you can always ask the Open Table app to notify you if or when availability does pop up for that specific day and time frame. But if you still can't manage to grab a seat for this new restaurant, you can always swing by the Cake Bake Shop's walk-up bakery to grab a dessert and drink or whatever grabs your fancy, no reservations necessary. Now that's pretty much it when it comes to brand new restaurants that opened at Disney World in 2024 so far. Though I'd also still throw the Disney Springs restaurant, Summer House on the Lake and Eat by Manit Shawan into this newbie mix too since they've only been open just shy of a year. Summer House on the Lake is a table service open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that serves California-inspired bites including everything from pizza and pasta to fresh salads and sandwiches. Much like the Cake Bake Shop, Summer House also has a walk-up bakery on the inside of the restaurant where you can grab a cookie or a baked good to go. Meanwhile, Eat is a quick service location that serves traditional Indian cuisine with a more modern flair. And just so you know, Eat recently released a new happy hour menu that's available from 2 to 5 p.m. daily, where you can order exclusive entrees that aren't typically featured on the Eat menu, like the cheese quesadilla with Indian pico and a side of rayada, which is that sauce made from yogurt and Indian spices. So what brand new Disney World restaurants are on the horizon that we should look forward to as we go into next year? Well, it's not restaurants per se that you need to get hyped for, it's the bars and lounges. Why Lulu Bar and Grill is slated to open when the Polynesian Village's new Disney Vacation Club Island Tower opens up on December 17th, giving guests a new place to enjoy drinks and dine while overlooking the Seven Seas Lagoon. Then, once the new year rolls around, a new lounge themed to the classic Pirates of the Caribbean attraction is coming to Adventureland and Magic Kingdom in 2025. Disney shared that this lounge will be a first-of-its-kind experience extending the story of Pirates of the Caribbean. Finally, we've got one more lounge that you need to be on the lookout for, and that's the Spaceship 
Earth-themed lounge coming to Epcot in 2025 as well. This lounge's sleek look will be inspired by the stories, shapes, and enduring legacy of the park's icon, the giant golf ball-looking sphere. Yep, the geodesic sphere herself, Spaceship Earth. In the midst of all these new restaurants and lounges, I fear that some of Disney World's existing dining experiences are going to wind up being overlooked or passed up by many future Disney guests, much like there are already with current Disney guests. But I implore you, don't skip out on these underrated restaurants until you get to know them. Here, I'll even help you get acquainted. First, let me introduce you to Skipper Canteen over at Magic Kingdom. Skipper Canteen ties into and expands upon the Jungle Cruise attraction backstory. Inside, you'll encounter three dining rooms, the Fall family parlor, the crew mess hall, and a once secret meeting room for the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. Brave guests are treated to adventurous cuisine built with Asian, South American, and African-influenced dishes. And best of all, your server is going to be a fellow wacky Jungle Cruise skipper like you've probably met or are destined to meet on the Jungle Cruise ride. I think folks tend to steer away from this restaurant just because the menu is more unique than pretty much all the other menus around Magic Kingdom. And despite its fun theming, it tends to be overshadowed by other themed sit down experiences like Cinderella's Royal Table and Be Our Guest Restaurant, which we're going to talk more about later on. But if you're looking for a more adventurous dining experience with lots of fun theming and food that goes beyond those theme park staples, it's usually not too difficult to get a reservation for this place. Skipper Canteen also usually has a secret menu you can order off of where you can order select bites and drinks that aren't going to be directly listed on the menu itself. The secret menu is constantly switching up here, but more often than not, you should be able to order the Pau de Queijo Brazilian Cheese Bread served with a side of poblano cream and red pepper flakes and chimichurri sauce. Just ask your server about the secret menu after you're seated. Now this might surprise you, but Docking Bay 7 at Hollywood Studios isn't everyone's quick service of choice, even though it's inside the super popular Galaxy's Edge area. And that's not just because it blends in seamlessly with its surroundings, so much so that you might walk past it without realizing, but also because it's got that same stigma attached to it that Skipper Canteen does. The food can seem just a little too adventurous here, especially with items called the to and beef and crispy tapato and smoked kadu pork rib and even the Andorian fried chicken tip yip. And while, yeah, the food here can look a bit more adventurous than other quick service entrees, it's also a lot more familiar than you might think. For example, that Andorian fried chicken tip dip, yeah, just remove the Andorian and tip yip from the title and you're left with what the meal actually is, fried chicken. <laughs> So for those who are a tad more adventurous, but not so adventurous that they want their food tasting as unique as it sounds, this can be a great fast food spot for you with lots of really intricate Star Wars theming. And while the pricing is a little higher at Docking Bay 7 compared to some other quick service restaurants around the parks, the majority of Docking Bay's meals are also very filling, so you're going to get your money's worth. And if it's one of those nice days where you can sit outside, I absolutely love the Docking Bay 7 outdoor seating. I don't think anybody really knows it's there a lot of the time, but definitely Definitely, once you get your meal, head on outside and sit in that little courtyard. It's lovely. Now, Olivia's Cafe is more of an under the radar restaurant for a whole different reason. It's literally a hidden gem, since you have to make a separate trip out to Disney's old Key West Resort to eat here, which might not be convenient for guests who aren't already staying at OKW to begin with. But if you do make the journey out to Old Key West for an Olivia's Cafe meal, this table service restaurant will serve you that classic American fare with items directly inspired by the Florida Keys. This spot also serves up brunch every single day, which is a rarity on the Disney scene. We love coming here in the late morning to specifically enjoy a nice heaping helping of banana bread French toast, topped with a Bahamian banana rum syrup, creme anglaise, and whipped cream, then served with our choice of bacon or sausage. Now here's a guidebook tip alert. Olivia's Cafe is one of the few Disney Resort restaurants that has a table service to go option where you can skip the sit down portion and take your meal with you elsewhere, like maybe over for a nice brunchy picnic or a cozy breakfast back in your hotel room. You can order this meal to go the same way you'd place a mobile order on the My Disney Experience app. Just keep in mind that you're still ordering table service food here, so your pickup time probably isn't going to be as fast as what a fast food place will give you. Okay, now I'm going to need you to do me a favor. I'm going to need you to plan a visit to Cruise Cup Lounge over at Disney's Yacht Club and order the prime rib sliders. Just for me, I really don't want these sliders to leave me again. Okay, you don't have to go to Cruise Cup Lounge. I'd never force you to go out of your way for a restaurant you're not totally sold on, but I'm going to try to sell you on this one because it is really a hidden gem. Cruise Cup is a cozy little lounge open for dinner from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. and late night dining from 10 to 11. The menu features a variety of food straight from the adjacent Yachtsman Steakhouse restaurant, plus an extensive wine, cocktail, and draft beer list too. But of course, when I'm there, the prime rib sliders are a must. 
So hearing about all these sky-high meal prices around the Disney scene might really be grinding your gears right now, but if you're looking for some more affordable and reliable options, here's where the team and I prefer to go, both inside the parks and outside, starting with Columbia Harbor House at Magic Kingdom. This quick service has a variety of New England-inspired surf and turf, like seafood platters, lobster rolls, and maple mustard glazed salmon. And the best news about this place? Adult entrees tend to range around $11 to $15, which honestly, that's about the same price as the sandwich I ordered for lunch today. You can also pick up a basket of hush puppies here, either as an extra side or a little afternoon snack. And I am so thrilled I still get to recommend that because Disney took the hush puppies away from us for a little bit there while they made some Columbia Harbor House menu changes earlier in 2024. The hush puppies were removed from the menu in mid-June, but returned in early July as an Independence Day miracle. The only outlier here is the restaurant's famous lobster roll, which will set you back about $19, but that's still less than a cake slice you'll get at the Cake Bake Shop. Guidebook tip alert, Columbia Harbor House has a lot of menu changes recently, but one thing that some folks still tend to mourn over is the loss of the plant-based lighthouse sandwich that used to be available at this quick service. The lighthouse included hummus, tomato, and broccoli slaw, and was a popular and fresh choice for several guests. That being said, Sunshine Seasons over in Epcot now serves an upgraded version of the Lighthouse Sandwich called the Mediterranean Vegetable Sandwich, made with roasted red pepper, red onion, tomato, arugula, hummus, and balsamic vinaigrette. And yep, it's still very much a plant-based meal, so grab that at Sunshine Seasons in Epcot for lunch. And now it's time to shout out a quick service barbecue duo. Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot is a fast casual restaurant that celebrates the famous regions of American barbecue while serving up craft brews on tap, if you wish to partake and are of drinking age. And the best part about this place, it's not gonna hurt your wallet's feelings. Well, unless you try a bunch of those craft beers, but booze in Disney World is booze in Disney World, period. Meanwhile, the Flame Tree Barbecue Quick Service in Animal Kingdom is the place where you're gonna find my birthday fries. Don't try to look those up on the Flame Tree menu, you're not gonna find them. Birthday fries are what I call the French fries with pulled pork and cheese that you can order as one of your sides. And that's because anytime I'm in Disney World for my birthday, I go to Animal Kingdom just to order these fries. And why wouldn't I? They're practically screaming, AJ Wolf, consume me, please. They are cheesy, they're starchy, they're affordable, they're delicious. They just are celebration worthy, in my humble opinion. So if you're gonna be celebrating your birthday in Disney World next year, make sure to enjoy an order of birthday fries too. And think of me when you do. Or maybe you want to enjoy another type of loaded fry from this place. Recently, Disney dropped seven new types of loaded fries on the menus of various Disney World restaurants, Flame Tree and Regal Eagle being two of them. At Regal Eagle, you can grab an order of the barbecue fries topped with coleslaw, sweet barbecue sauce, and ketchup aioli. And at Flame Tree, you can grab one of our favorite versions, the amazing Magic Munch fries, which are also available at Restaurantosaurus too. These fries are topped with sweet corn, chipotle mayonnaise, chili lime spiced cotija cheese, and popcorn for an extra crunch. Finally, I wanna talk about a quick service we don't nearly talk about enough, and that's Captain Cook's at Polynesian Village Resort. Captain Cook's deserves some credit here. Not only is it the most affordable place to grab a meal at this deluxe resort, but it's also got some really solid and unique options to try, like the pulled pork nachos or Thai coconut meatballs for lunch and dinner, as well as the Tonga Toast for breakfast. Tonga Toast is also served for breakfast upstairs at Kona Cafe, which is a sit-down restaurant at Polynesian Village, but the cheapest place you're gonna be able to order Tonga Toast will definitely be at Captain Cook's. It's actually significantly less expensive there than it is upstairs. And it's pretty much the same thing. Let's talk about that for a second with the guidebook tip alert. One of the things the team and I have worked really hard on with the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining is adding sample dining itineraries where you can see how much realistically it's gonna cost you to dine around Disney each day. We also compare how much it's gonna cost you to dine at one Disney restaurant versus another, just in case you're having a hard time deciding. So let me show you a little example of what those itineraries might look like by showing you how much money you'll spend on a breakfast at Captain Cook's versus a breakfast at Ohana, which is right upstairs. Let's say you're feeding a family of four, two adults, two kids. If you were to purchase Tonga Toast for $10.49, a breakfast burrito for $9.49, and two kids Mickey Shape Waffles, $7.59 each, you're looking at spending about $35.16. Not including any extra drinks the parents might want to tack onto their meal, a milk and bottled water is included with each kid's meal. Meanwhile, Ohana's character breakfast with all you care to enjoy family style dining is gonna cost $53 per adult and $33 per kid. Yep, the price of one kiddo here is about the same cost for an entire family's breakfast at Captain Cook's. So you can expect to pay around $172 for breakfast at Ohana, not including specialty drinks or gratuity. So you've definitely got choices here, my friends, and we help you make them in the DFB Guide. 
I'm not always one to tell you to go with the most popular and hyped up restaurant choices around property, but in the case of these Disney restaurants, I say go for it because they're definitely hyped up for a reason. Take Les All Boulangerie Patisserie, for instance, over in Epcot's France. To get here, you'll have to go to the very back of the France Pavilion and then enter through a gift shop, which is the same gift shop you'll exit into after watching the Beauty and the Beast sing-along show. Despite it being so tucked away into the back of the park, there's almost always a line snaking around this place, but no worries, the line moves pretty quickly. It's just the seating you're going to have to be concerned with since it's very limited inside Lay All, meaning you might have to take your order to go and find some place outside to eat it. The savory section on the menu includes several different house-made sandwiches, as well as baked goods like croissants and bag Gets. And then, of course, we got the desserts, where you can order options like beignets and tarts and eclairs and macarons and stuff like that. When I'm not picking up my birthday fries over at Flame Tree Barbecue, you're more than likely going to see me following the quick service crowds over at Satuli Canteen when I'm all, well, I'll be at Nomad Lounge probably, but also Satuli Canteen. And yeah, I'm okay with being a sheep in this sort of scenario since it means I'll be getting some really good fast food that's also extremely unique to the Disney scene. Satuli serves those tasty steamed cheeseburger pods, which are bao buns filled with ground hamburger and cheese and pickle. It's actually an old family recipe of Joe Rody's, believe it or not. And they have a variety of customizable bowls there as well, where you'll be able to pick your meal, your base, like noodles or rice or lettuce and your sauce too. Oh, and by the way, Satuli just started serving breakfast again, so check that out. All right, guidebook tip alert. The sauces that you can include with your customizable bowl at Satuli are unique. You got options like charred green onion vinaigrette, black bean vinaigrette, and creamy herb dressing. If you wanna try a sauce without fully committing to it being all over your bowl though, you can ask for it on the side, either while you're ordering in person or while you're ordering on the My Disney Experience app. If you're mobile ordering, then after you've chosen your bowl's base and sauce, scroll down to the customize your selection option and choose on the side for your sauce. You can also choose for the boba pearls that normally come on top of your bowl to be placed on the side as well. The customization part of this restaurant is really what keeps selling us on Satuli because you can make it as adventurous or as tame a meal as you want it to be. And then you've got the two extremely popular castle restaurants over at Magic Kingdom, which are pricey, yes, but popular because they're gonna give you that quintessential Royal Disney experience you're gonna be craving, I, I'm assuming. Be Our Guest Restaurant Inside Fantasyland gives you the chance to dine inside the Beast's Castle. There are three different themed dining rooms here, the Ballroom, the Rose Gallery, and the West Wing. You can also spot the Beast himself walking through the restaurant on occasion. Recently, the Beast started doing his meet and greets again inside the castle, but we have not seen that for several months now. So don't, you know, don't assume that's going to happen. This restaurant only serves lunch and dinner. Both feature a prefix menu, meaning you're going to pay one set cost and then choose an appetizer, entree, and dessert. Eating in the castle doesn't come cheap, especially when you're forced to pay for three different courses, whether you want a three-course meal or not. Currently, a meal at Be Our Guest is going to set you back $72 per adult and $43 per kid, so it's definitely definitely one of those one and done experiences for most of us. But still, I'm one of those people that like when I go to a flea market, I want to look in every single stall. And so being able to go inside the Beast Castle and see it even just one time is, you know, worth it for me. Also in Fantasyland, you've got what might just be the most popular restaurant in all of Disney World, Cinderella's Royal Table. Eating in the Cinderella Castle and meeting a lot of Disney princesses during your meal could be a dream come true. But once again, you're looking at a pre fixed dining experience here, meaning you're going to be paying, brace yourself for this one, $88 per adult and $52 per kid. Now that price hike really smarts. You can experience Cinderella's Royal Table for cheaper if you book breakfast here instead of lunch or dinner, but that breakfast is still going to put you back $74 bucks per adult and $45 per kid. So if you're looking for the cheapest royal meet and greet dining experience that still takes place inside a castle setting, I'd suggest turning your attention to Akershus Royal Banquet Hall in Epcot instead. Akershus is located inside the Norway Pavilion and is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, serving all-you-can-eat family-style Norwegian specialties like Norwegian meatballs and chicken and dumplings. Now, when I say this princess dining experience is the cheapest, I don't mean it's cheap by any means. You're still going to have to pay a pretty penny to dine at this location. All right, now we're looking at $59 per adult and $38 per kid for breakfast, which you do get to meet a bunch of princesses. When you're going to Disney World during a busier time of year, or even during an average crowd level time of year, restaurant reservations can book up on you really fast. 
but there are some restaurants that won't leave you hanging, usually, even if you want to book them on the day of your visit. And that's not because they're bad restaurants that no one wants to eat in. I just think they're often overlooked is all. Liberty Tree Tavern in Magic Kingdom, one of my very favorite places to eat. This is a family style, all you care to enjoy Thanksgiving style dining in a restaurant that's very old colonial chic to make you feel like you're stepping back in time and inside a stately colonial mansion. Now, this is edutainment at its best. It's fun to just look at all the artwork and patchwork quilt designs decorating the space. One whole room is dedicated to Betsy Ross. You've got a whole room dedicated to Ben Franklin. For some reason, my favorite founding father. Couldn't tell you why. But Tomato Baby is my latest artistic fixation. I have so many questions about Tomato Baby. Why tomato? Why is this child just straight up biting into this tomato like it's an apple? Indeed, is it supposed to be an apple and I'm looking at it all wrong? I need some answers. Now, Spice Road Table over in Epcot is another one of those restaurants where last minute reservations are very available. And I know people forget about this one because it's in the Morocco Pavilion and not a whole lot else is going on over there at the moment. Spice Road Table has both indoor and outdoor seating and the menu features tapas style dishes or small plates, including hummus fries, pomegranate chili crispy cauliflower with red pepper sauce, spice lamb kefta, and more. Another reason I think reservations aren't exactly flying off the shelf for Spice Road Table is because this can be way too adventurous for kids who'd rather stick with the Mickey D's style hamburgers and chicken nugs. But if you're looking for something super unique, Spice Road Table has treated us well in the past and we have high hopes it'll treat us well again in the future. Another restaurant that tends to have last minute availability in Epcot is Chefs de France. Now guess which pavilion this one is in. Go on, just, just guess. Anyway, Chefs de France is a table service restaurant that serves up classic French cuisine like filet de bouffe, that's a beef filet, gratin de macaroni, macaroni and cheese, and ratatouille sur quinoa. This place also has an impressively cheesy French onion soup that you might want to kick off your meal with, cheesy in a good way, of course. Now, speaking of impressively cheesy, let's give a quick shout out to Steakhouse 71 over in Disney's Contemporary Resort. Steakhouse 71 offers casual table service dining for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a setting that celebrates Disney World's opening year, 1971. While the dinnertime Steakhouse cut menu is usually what people rave about, we find ourselves gravitating toward other items on this menu, like the uber cheesy stack burger, the bacon and eggs appetizer, and again, the French onion soup. Why is Disney so good at French onion soup? Like they've got that recipe nailed. Now, if for some reason you show up to this restaurant without any reservations and there isn't any walk-up availability, no worries. You can always grab a seat over in the attached Steakhouse 71 lounge, first come first served, and order from their selection of bites and drinks instead, which still includes some of our favorites like the stack burger all day long and bacon and eggs. Now, speaking of, here's a guidebook tip for you. The stack burger is not on Steakhouse 71's dinner menu. You won't see it there, but don't don't stress if you go for dinner and you want the burger. Just ask for it. They will make it for you because they're already making it for people in the lounge. Okay, here's one more for you, and it's still at a Disney World hotel, the Grand Floridian Resort to be exact. Grand Floridian Cafe serves hearty brunch fare daily during both breakfast and lunch with breakfast items available up until 2 p.m. The buttermilk fried chicken tends to be a cafe favorite here, which is served as an entree with sides during dinner, like the chicken and waffles entree during breakfast and lunch. There are some Disney World restaurants that end up on our top restaurants list year after year. And at the rate they're going, I don't think they're going to be demoted anytime soon. La Cellier in Epcot, for instance, is just, ugh, it's my favorite. The signature restaurant is located in the Canada Pavilion and serves up all my favorite foods, meat and potatoes and poutine and Canadian cheddar cheese soup and... I love it all. My only issue with La Salle, though, is the seating. Now, I'm not opposed to the whole intimate dining room wine cellar vibe, but this is a teeny tiny restaurant and the tables are very close together. When I come here all by my lonesome while working on my updated restaurant reviews, I always ask the host up front if they wouldn't mind putting me at the end of a banquette seating row if they don't have any standalone two tops available, just so I'm not shoulder to shoulder with strangers on either side of me. It's very uncomfortable for someone like me who is a major introvert and very socially awkward. Awkward. Now, another AJ tried and true favorite, Nomad Lounge. Yep, I love it. I mentioned it earlier and I will bring it up again. Nomad is attached to the signature Tiffin's restaurant, which I honestly don't love. I know a lot of you do and that's great, but Nomad, I will choose that every single time. The seating is nice and spacious, whether you choose to dine inside or out. The handcrafted cocktails are interesting and refreshing and the lounge bites are filling and satisfying, especially those churros, which I still wholeheartedly believe are are the best churros on property. Just make sure you remember to add yourself to the walk-up wait list via the My Disney Experience app or in person if you want to dine and drink here during your Animal Kingdom day. That walk-up wait list typically opens at around 10.30 a.m. And yes, during busier seasons,
since it can fill up fast, so no dilly-dallying. Jumping from the Animal Kingdom Park to the Animal Kingdom Lodge, it's now time to eat at one of my, if not all-time favorite Disney hotel restaurant, one of my favorites for sure. Sanaa is located in the Kidani Village section of the resort where it serves authentic African and Indian-inspired food next to these giant windows that overlook the resort's savanna. Since Sanaa tends to be out of the way of the other resorts and parks, besides Animal Kingdom, of course, it often gets overlooked by guests. So I guess this restaurant could have been added to the needs more love section of the video, but I think the amount of love I alone have for this one might almost be smothering Sanaa at this point. I definitely recommend trying to book a meal for lunch here rather than dinner unless you're planning on having an early dinner, because if you go here after the sun sets, then you're going to miss out on seeing all those animals wandering around the savanna. We've got another guidebook tip alert. For an even cheaper Sanaa meal option, come here in the morning for a quick service Kumasha breakfast, which serves options like Eggs Benedict, Banana Brulee, French Toast, and Mickey shaped waffles for the kids. Good food, check. Good entertainment, check. Good food and entertainment, oh, check and check. When you dine in Disney World, you might be looking for that extra oomph of fun, immersive theming to go along with your meal. And I truly believe you're gonna get just that with this particular lineup of restaurants. These are some of my absolute favorites nostalgic favorites, food favorites, etc. We're gonna start with one of the most immersive lounges of them all, Trader Sam's Grog Grotto at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Now, Trader Sam, who you might know as the famous head salesman of the Jungle Cruise ride, has spent his years collecting artifacts from his travels around the world and is welcoming you to his happy hideaway to see them all. There are a lot of them. Throughout your visit, when you start to see orders being brought out to different tables, you'll quickly learn that most of the alcoholic drinks featured on the menu have some sort of backstory, meaning that when you order one, you're going to trigger an event inside the grotto. With vibrant light tricks and sounds and over-the-top reactions from the bartenders and servers, maybe even a harmless little prank. It's fun to listen in on each of the stories of all the different types of drinks, and it certainly helps make this visit one you will not forget. And you're going to want to go back so that you can see what happens with every single drink. See, that's that flea market thing again. I just I need to see everything. All right, by day, from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., this lounge space is family friendly. After 8 p.m., though, you'll need to be 21 and older to step inside and enjoy the atmosphere and the lounge and the food and the drinks until closing. Not that anything super different happens after 8 p.m., but you know, that's just, them's the rules. You'll also wanna plan to arrive early to put your name on the walk-up wait list for Grog Grotto, cause this bar is tiny and it fills up fast. If you're up for an exciting meal filled with Oktoberfest celebrations and polka music galore, then snag those reservations for Beer Garten in Epcot's Germany Pavilion. I have a special place in my heart for Beer Garten because my family used to go to Beer Garten all the time when I was a kid and I absolutely adore this restaurant. It's a theater style buffet set up like an authentic German beer garden and filled with long family style tables. The story? You're now inside a Bavarian village that's celebrating Oktoberfest all year long and that means you're able to watch German performers showcase authentic Oktoberfest numbers up on the main stage, Lederhosen and all. So even if your 2025 trip isn't going to be happening during Oktoberfest, which is interestingly in September. You are celebrating Oktoberfest now if you're eating at Beer Garden. So let's switch things over from German restaurant celebrations to Irish ones. Raglan Road is an authentic Irish pub right in the heart of Disney Springs. Classic Irish dishes are presented with a contemporary twist here with really fun names, so be sure to read the whole menu. But what makes this restaurant really stand out is its frequent live Irish music and dancing performances straight over from the Emerald. World Isle. You can check on those updated performance times via the Disney World and Raglan Road websites and Slancha. Now here's a guidebook tip alert. Raglan Road might have some sort of specialty event or celebration going on during your next visit. This table service loves celebrating World Whiskey Day on May 15th and the Great Irish Hooli around Labor Day weekend. And of course, this is party central during St. Patrick's Day. Just be warned, Raglan Road might have an extra cover charge on St. Patrick's Day that they don't normally have for guests, which is typically $20 per guest for any anyone 18 years of age and older. Hopefully you're not all entertained out just yet though, because we've still got to tell you about the only dinner theater show on Disney World property, hoop de doo musical review. I know you've been waiting for this one, right? Over at Fort Wilderness Resort. Disney's hoop de doo musical review is set in a huge barn complete with stage and musical numbers where you'll literally be served buckets of comfort food like fried chicken and mashed potatoes in an all you care to enjoy fashion. This is also the only restaurant on property where you can get unlimited draft beer and wine and sangria if you're 21 and older. Is it good beer, wine, or sangria? No, it's very basic, but it is unlimited, so quantity over quality, I suppose. 
So earlier in the video, we already mentioned a few different character dining experiences like 1900 Park Fair, Cinderella's Royal Table, and Akershus Royal Banquet Hall. But this is Disney we're talking about here, so of course there are so many different character dining experiences for you to experience. But which ones are the best of the best, aside from the ones we've already mentioned today? It's hard to narrow it down, but there are three that I want to specifically highlight. Storybook dining at Artist Point with Snow White inside Wilderness Lodge might be a mouthful to say, but it quickly jumped up to being one of my all-time favorite character meals after I came here with my mom. I could not believe the size of the Yorkshire puddings we were served with our prime rib. It was so much fun to see my 82-year-old mom interacting with Grumpy and Dopey. Oh my goodness, she loved the Evil Queen. Of course, who doesn't? Because she's perfect. It was a blast. So. What can you expect from a dinner at Storybook Dining? Here, you're gonna enjoy a prefix menu of fairy tale themed cuisine while clapping and laughing along with some of the most notable characters pulled from that very first classic animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, including the high villainess herself, that evil queen. As far as the atmosphere goes, this restaurant will make you feel like you've just been dropped in an enchanted forest, surrounding you with tons of enchanted twinkling trees. There really isn't a bad seat in the restaurant unless you're right next to like the kitchen because it's designed to feel pretty open and not like strangers are gonna bump elbows with you during the course of your meal. Le Cellier, take notes. So feel free to get up and walk around if you wanna take in the surrounding scenery or redeem your royal invitation to get your picture taken with the evil queen. A longtime favorite character dining experience of mine takes place over at Epcot. And if you've been a longtime fan of this channel, you probably already know what I'm about to say. Let's do it together. One, two, three, Garden Grill. Right, Garden Grill is a family character meal where you can meet Farmer Mickey Pluto, Chip, and Dale during breakfast, usually multiple times because it's a very small restaurant and they come around again and again and again. And you're gonna enjoy an all you care to eat meal that's very reminiscent of a Thanksgiving dinner. Well, unless you come during breakfast. Then it's more of an assortment of pastries and fresh fruit and Mickey waffles and scalloped potatoes and bacon and scrambled eggs and other classic morning stuff. But the most unique part about this restaurant is that it slowly rotates. I mean, very slowly rotates during the course of your family style meal. And since this restaurant is on the second floor of the land pavilion, right above the living with the land boat ride, you'll get to look into unique vantage points of the ride scenes as you rotate. I love this restaurant. Okay, admittedly, Chef Mickey's over at the Contemporary Resort is not my favorite character dining experience ever. But for many guests, it's right on up there with Cinderella's Royal Table, since this is the only character meal where you can meet all five of the Fab Five. So that's Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, Goofy, and Donald, each of which will be dressed up all cutesy in chef attire and worthy of Food Network. Chef Mickey's is another buffet-style restaurant available to book for breakfast or dinner that's only a short walk away from the Magic Kingdom front gate. But if you're coming here to get quick respite from the parks, heed my warning. This restaurant is not a quiet or chill one, not in the slightest. Lots of excited kiddo squeals, celebration songs, napkin twirling parades, lots of noisy merriment all meal long. Okay, we get asked all the time for good date night restaurants, and I got a whole lot of love for this next lineup of restaurants that are sophisticated in theming and high-end in dining and all around romantic in feeling, though they can still be enjoyed whether you're on a hot date or just hanging out with friends for a night of elegant celebration. So let's go back to Animal Kingdom Lodge and talk about a restaurant I didn't get to talk about earlier that I'd put up right there with Sanaa. Jiko, the cooking place, might not have the savanna views like Sanaa does, but the food and decor make up for that. There are a lot of details you're not going to want to overlook inside the dining room. For example, the rings on the large columns in the restaurant represent the rings worn on women's necks by some African tribes. Also, the back wall is meant to resemble a beautiful African sunset and it will change colors throughout the night very slowly. Now, if you look closely, you may find a hidden Mickey above the smokestacks over at the flatbread station. The food here is inspired by African, Indian, and Mediterranean flavors, but don't get too attached to whatever you end up ordering. The meals at Chico change up seasonally to provide something fresh and new each time you visit. Here's a guidebook tip alert. Don't overlook the wine list here. It's made up of South African wines, which you can also order from the neighboring Cape Town Lounge and Wine Bar too, if you don't make a reservation for Chico and need a walk-up alternative. Now, speaking of high-end restaurants and their respective lounges, let's hop over to Hollywood Brown Derby for a sec over in Hollywood Studios. This signature restaurant 
restaurant is well known for its famous Cobb salad and grapefruit cake, but that's not where the good options end here. You can also get charcuterie platters, filet mignon, lamb shank, and lots of different cocktails that you and your partner can clink together and say cheers to us. If you don't manage to snag reservations to this place while they're available, you can always get a first come first serve seat at the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge, where you can still order many options straight from the restaurant's main menu, including the Cobb salad. Now here's an interesting date night spot. Dahlia Lounge is located on the top floor of Grandestino Tower at Coronado Springs and is right next to the Tower's Toledo Tapa Steak and Seafood Restaurant. Dahlia is all about Spanish modernism and in its interior design with tapas, specialty cocktails, and Spanish wines as the menu highlights. But what makes this date night offering really top notch is the underrated fireworks views from the outdoor seating area, complete with patio benches, coffee tables, and pillows. I love this place. So what do you think? Which Disney World restaurants are up on your radar right now as must tries for your future visit? Let me know in the comments. And if you're ready to find out even more DFB guidebook tips for every single Disney World restaurant, be sure to check out dfbstore.com right now and type in code YouTube to save some money on your guidebook purchase. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.